Welcome to our channel, Aportes Afrofostaricenses y Diasporicos. In our section in conversation with, we have with us Dr. Natasha Gordon Chimpembere, who will be discussing on the topic contextualizing the Black Lives Matter in the diaspora. Dr. Gordon Chimpembere has been a professor of African diasporic literature for over 20 years. She has taught in classrooms from South Africa to New York to Costa Rica. Her academic scholarship focuses on South slavery Africa and her Gordon Chimpembera's writing has also been published in Essence magazine along with the monthly series, Musings from the Afro-Costa Rican in the Thico Times. She is, she is a senior coordinator of the Afro-Latin diaspora book series from Palgrave, where she prioritizes the voices of emerging Afro-Latina scholars. Her current writing focuses on slavery and the legacy of Afro-descendant in Latin America. And she has just completed a historical fiction novel on Afro-descendants who lived and worked in the colonial Costa Rica in the 17th century. Gordon Chimpembere was born in New York to Costa Rican Panamanian parents and moved to Costa Rica full-time six years ago with her husband and two children. So welcome. Yes. Um, well, just to, to make an introduction, George Floyd was killed by a police officer in May uh, the 25th. And since then, sadly, the shootings and killings of African Americans haven't stopped. Around this matter, today is August the 27th and two days ago, in Bedford County, Pennsylvania, a group of residents all white with large guns, large as the size of a human body. And I am a Costa Rican, we don't have an, an army here, so for us it's very shocking. We're guarding the city hall and surroundings after gunshots exchanged between them and some of, so to speak, you know, Black Lives Matter activists who were marching from Wisconsin to Washington, D.C. So the footage of some white non-residents that happened to be there at the moment, asking what was the gathering all, all about, revealed that they threatened them um, and actually in the midst of what they recognize as a lynching mob. So knowing that the first amendment refers to freedom of speech and the second it's about the right to keep and bear arms, but seems like the order and importance have been twisted or taking wrong, the first question would be, how did the Black Lives Matter movement start? Oh, first, thank you so much, Carmen and Diana, for having me on. This is a really important project that you've undertaken, and I really admire your work, and it's an honor for me to be part of this, this project of representation and getting our voices out. So I think that that even underscores some of the ideas on the formation of Black Lives Matter. So Black Lives Matter in the United States is a decentralized organization that was founded seven years ago at the killing of uh, Trayvon Martin, who is a young black man visit, uh, going to the store, buying some candy, and basically there was a gentleman who was part of a neighborhood watch who very similar to what you were talking about, Diana, Diana, about vigilantes, right? People who are taking up weapons for themselves. George Zimmerman decided that this young man who had candy in his hand, walking home, talking to his girlfriend on the phone was armed and dangerous and he killed him. And that is not the beginning of the killing of, and criminalizing of black bodies but it was a particular moment because the police system let off George Zimmerman. And I think from that moment on, the level of frustration really took on sort of civil rights, 1960s, um, post Emmett Till fervor in that it unified a community and then sort of the globe in looking at the way that historically without stopping, but now with more cameras, right? 
there had been an absolute assault of black and brown bodies, not only in the United States, but globally. And so there were three black women who formed what we now know as sort of the leadership of Black Lives Matter. But it was from that moment of Trayvon Martin's murder, as well as George Zimmerman getting off. Um, and, and that was seven years ago. And so what ends up happening is that it has not stopped. It is basically a political movement that is a coalition of so many communities coming together to really deal with the central idea of police brutality, right? And I think that um, what we've seen with the George, George Floyd murder in cold blood, videotape for eight minutes, this man called his mother, right? He's dead. He called ancestor because he knew it was over in front of everybody for the world to watch while the man who killed him looked directly into the camera. Like we've been doing this for a while and we always get away with it. Right. And so what we find is another cycle in sort of the surging of protest. But Black Lives Matter is an established coalition of different organizations that are really talking about ending the war on black people or people of African descent. And so that spills outside of the United States, but it's centralized because it's, it's on stage right now. Somos voces de la historia, sangre, tinta y papel. Somos voces de la historia, mis ancestros, su saber, mis ancestros, su saber, mis ancestros, su saber. Oh.